approve the minutes from October 27th. All in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed? Okay, uh, I don't see Blair. Uh, we'll let that one go. Love short meeting. Uh, Sheena Washington, are you in the house? I don't see Sheena. Okay. Uh, Robin, do you want to do student rights and responsibility appearance there? We, we really need to try and keep the murmuring down. Good evening, Robin McNair, board of directors. I want to give you an update on the discipline survey count. I received this Friday afternoon from the staff here at PGCEA. And on November 21st, we had a total of 577 teachers who have filled out the discipline survey. And guys, that's not good because the last time we did a discipline survey, it was 538. So we went up about 20 members, but we really need for you to push people to fill the survey out. We decided to go ahead and extend it to the 27th. And you can really push your members, um, co-workers to fill out that discipline survey because we're really trying to address the discipline issues in the county. And the state has given the county a charge to almost water down the student rights and responsibility handbook, almost leaving us as teachers with no rights. So we really need to address this issue and we need hard data to be able to um, have a, a good discussion at the table. So please get your members to fill this survey out. It is on the website, pgcea.org. So you can just get it on the website, sign in with the EIN and fill out that survey as soon as possible. Oh, central office included. Thank you. Sheena Washington. Last call. Sheena? Hi. Whoa. Okay. Hello, Sheena. Last call. You are almost on. So. Hello. I'm sorry. I'm late. Oh, I just got out of court duty. Um, my name is Sheena Washington. I'm the school administrator for Central Office Center. And I just wanted to say that I'm really proud of the school district. 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 Um, I wanted to start a special education caucus. How many special educators are here in the room today? Okay, great. Um, one of the things that I, <laughs> yeah. Well, one of the things that I would like to do is to build upon the work that um, at the convention at MSEA they proposed a new business item, um, 1413, that looks at differentiating planning time for special educators, where we will have plenty of time for instruction and planning time for case management. So I want to build upon that work. MSCA is creating a working group and I would like Prince George's County to take um, the forefront in getting that work started. Um, so I propose to create a special education caucus where teachers can come together and start talking about what's working in the county and what we need to change. I'm gonna have a sign-in sheet at the back if you could just sign your name with your email and I will be getting in touch with our first meeting, which will hopefully be in January. Okay, so thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And she's our, I think our newest fellow, most recently, because we were there last week. Okay. Uh, I'm going to bring appearances. Do you have a budget committee report? Thank you again. Thank you very much. Because actually, 
Um, as you know, there are some races that we did not win. However, please keep in mind that over 90% of PGCA's endorsed candidates um, have been elected or re-elected between the primary and the general. So that is outstanding, that is all to you. So again, thank you very much. Um, also upcoming with the general um, assembly. As you know, um, there's been a change in the governor's office. And Maryland has, right now, they project Maryland to have a $600 million shortfall. The, the, incoming, the incoming governor has already given indication that he still intends to cut revenue sources. So, what does that mean? That means that we all need to be on our P's and Q's and be ready to move if possible. So, PDCA and MSCA will keep you informed about what's going on and how it may impact you. The only thing that we ask is that, because it's a 90-day cycle, you know it moves very quickly. If we ask you to come, come and bring three friends. You know, if we ask for a phone or do anything like that, because it's going to be really important. So, stay tuned. Thank you very much. I, I'm going to piggyback there, a $600 million deficit. I'm on the State Retirement Agency Board. The state agreed in 2011 that the state would fund the unfunded liability on the retirement plan and with a goal of reaching 100% funding on the retirement plan by 2039. They have already cut $100 million a year off of that agreement through 2019. And it is the easiest pot of money to go after. Uh, we're going to need to lobby on that because we're at 67, 68% funded on the retirement agency. Uh, we're, we're creeping up a little bit thanks to really good returns in the stocks this year and not because of contributions. And the, the local is going to make the normal cost contribution of, your, of the percentage of your salary, but it's up to the state to fund, to drop the money in the bucket for the unfunded liability of 32%. And so there, I'm, I'm absolutely in my heart certain that the new the governor-elect is going to go after at least some portion of that money probably going to go after some portion of school construction money, and probably going to go after GCEI, which would be a $39 million hit for this school system, the, the Geographic Cost of Education Index. So we're going to be needing to lobby. We're going to be needing to call our friends uh, in, in this coming budget cycle, because $600 million is, is a lot to cut. and if. If we have any indication from his father, he's not going to be a friend to public education. Okay? It's, I just, I find it hard to believe that the apple rolled so far from the tree that, that we're going to be held harmless in, in the budget cuts to come. Uh, membership committee. Yeah, point of information. I was just wondering, can this last election cycle we voted to have the government keep their paws off of the uh, transportation trust fund. I was wondering if you know if there's anything we could do to try and do the same thing for our pension fund so it's not rated every time they need some extra money. It's, it's not actually that they rated, Michelle, it's that they underfunded. They underfunded, and, and, and that's a different ball of wax. Uh, they, 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 they choose the when I'll be gone, you'll be gone method of funding the retirement plan. Uh, they don't want it funded until all of us are dead. Uh, so it, it, it's a fight. It's, it's, it's an underfunding problem. It's not a, a rating the fund. But the, once the money gets into the retirement agency, we do a good job of, of building it and, and protecting it. But it's got to get there first. Okay. Uh, membership. Good afternoon, everyone. I just want to thank everyone who came to the FAC2 training on Saturday, November 15th. It was an awesome crowd. Thank you so much on a Saturday. Thank you so much. As a result, several of our members recruited, recruited, and recruited. So far, we received 64, 64 new members, full pay members. Of those 64, 33 
were recruited by our own president at the peak, at the peak that we're having, the intermediate peak that we have now. Thank you so much, Ken. 33 members. Would the following members please stand as I read your name? Amelita Gordola, is she here? Annetta Jackson, Blair Todd, Brittany Allen, Cassandra Peters Johnson, Diane Diston, Frank McBride, Herbert Bridges, John Harris, Malvary Smith, Marilyn Paul, thank you, Marilyn, Natasha Mathis, Samantha Robinson, and Shelley Williams. Please, please give them a round of applause. They recruited our members, additional members. Thank you. Just so you know, for those of you who actually attended the training, we also want to acknowledge you. For those who attended on November 15th, please stand and be acknowledged. Anyone who actually attended the training on November 15th, give a round of applause for your crew. There were 112 who RSVP'd. As you know, people RSVP, things happen, but guess what, 63 of those 112 showed up on a Saturday morning at 9 a.m. 51 of them were reimbursed for their mileage and for their time, and they all have all agreed of those 63 to return in the spring to, to invite the people that they recruited as new members, as well as their FAC team members to come out for spring training. So you can imagine how amazing this training's gonna be. You're all invited. If you're interested, we'll be in touch to invite you out. Come and be a part of this exciting power organizing that we're doing for our organization. Thank you. Thank you. Well, One more thing. Those of you who attended the training and did not receive your lanyard, you know who you are? Please see myself or Gemma at the back. You know who you are. We will give it to you. Thank you so much. Future teachers, do I have a report? Genevieve <coughs> Cromer, Skyline Elementary. I am still trying to recruit members for the future teachers. We meet with the membership committee, and this next meeting will be December 9th at 4.30, so please come out. I do have a potential person that's supposed to join me. She said she would. So please come out and help me out. Thank you. Uh, speaking of, of the, the college scenario, I, I had a chance, thank you Doug, by the way, Doug McNamara invited me to speak at the University of Maryland this week to a room full of 20-something teachers, uh, the vast majority of whom didn't really know what union is. And we had a chance to talk for, I think, what, about an hour and a half? Uh, you know me when I get started. And, and I think that we actually have uh, some people who are going to make an effort to get involved in their local associations around the state now. And we've got to get them when they're coming out of college. They've got to know who we are before they get here. Uh, people have forgotten what union is about in, in the country, and that's why we're down to 11%. So anybody that can help on the future teacher effort, please do. Minority Affairs. One more time. Can I please have board member Tawana Lane speak? Absolutely. Hi everyone, board of directors Tawana R. Lane. So just one more thing to add to membership and future teacher. Future teacher is my heart dear, so we need as many volunteers as possible to work with our college students who want to be teachers. And second, to add to what Ms. Sabri from membership chair stated, if you attended the 15th or any of the workshops so far, and you attend the next one in the spring, you have the opportunity of receiving a certificate if you hold an APC, Advanced Placement Certification, for your renewal, you will receive a certificate at the end when they do the training that you can use towards renewal of your certification. So use that when you ask members to come, that they can also apply, get a certificate from PGCEA that will be accepted because we talked to the certification office towards the renewal of your APC. Thank you. Awesome. Going over here and then Minority Affairs is next. Okay. Go for it. Good evening, everyone. I'm Anna Jones, Perwood Elementary, Minority Affairs Chair. This evening, in addition to our announcement, we have a very special presentation to make to 
our retired co-chair of Minority Affairs. Could we please, Lucille? Oh, I think she's right there. around Michelle, um, Lucille, we're waiting on June. It's always amazing to me when I see someone who's retired and they just got this smile on their face. Yeah. <laughs> Ladies. Ladies and gentlemen, teachers, um, Lucille has served us extremely well in our Minority Affairs Committee. So as a result, Lucille, we want to salute you today for your outstanding years of service to PGCA. During your years of service, your dedication, in addition, your commitment was transmitted to us on the committee, and we appreciate all of it. You were approachable and someone who cares about our union and about our teachers. Thank you again for that love and dedication. You were also willing to work along with others and um, other associates. We thank you for your service. You were also willing to go beyond and above for the benefit of the, our association and other unions. And we say we thank you. So as we send you off on your retirement to relax and rejuvenate and reflect and do all the R's, we want you to enjoy all of it and on behalf of all of us and our president and members of the board and the association all we present to you a class Understand where the laugh comes from. 
<laughs> a couple of years in this chair. It'll do. You okay? Uh, NECC, do you have a report? So, 
you have my email saying I'm setting up a PGCEA meeting at and let's do it. Okay. We have no old business. Ta da! Sir. We have a couple administrative things to do. First, we must elect two uh, people to fill vacancies on the NECC uh, nominations, elections, credentials committee, commission. And uh, we had three people nominate themselves. If you hold up your little voting cards, which I think are pink this month, hold up your voting card. Uh, I have three people who are handing out ballots. Uh, and they are both two-year completions. So there are two years remaining on their terms. So we don't have to worry about who gets what. So if there are any, I'm gonna wait until they, everybody's got a ballot. Because I see cards disappear. I'll know that everybody has a ballot. cards up here. Thank you. So the first, the f are there any other nominations? One more time. Yes, please. Uh, Lenora Scott, Sylvia Boswell, June Bennett. Can you come up and let people take a look at you for a second? Yeah. Lenora Scott, Sylvia Boswell, June Bennett. If you would step to the front. Come on up. Seconded that we close nominations. Not debatable. All in favor of closing nominations say aye. Aye. All opposed? We have closed nominations. Kindly vote for up to two. You're not compelled to vote for two, uh, but up for up to two. You're done. Thank you. As you finish, uh, let's try and get some kind of uniformity on the ballots folded halfway vertically. ballots off the floor, we've got one more to do. And I'll need the NECC in here for that. Somebody don't forget to collect up here.
Last call. Come on. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> business that we have to do. Here comes the part. Uh, the NECC is going to distribute to you a blank ballot. Uh, I forgot to do something in September. We annually need to elect from the representative council. Uh, I think I think it's, I'm going to put it in the business meeting in May for, for the record, but we didn't do it this year. Uh, we need to elect the representative council's uh, representative to the Board of Trustees on our PGCEA Foundation, which is now responsible for overseeing uh, the co collection of monies for scholarship and other charitable things. And the representative council gets one representative. And so, as you, uh, go ahead and start passing out the ballots to people with voting cards. And what, what I want you to, it, it involves no, no more than half a dozen meetings in a year. It's, I think it's, uh, we, we schedule them quarterly. We schedule them quarterly. Uh, and then if we need another meeting or two, we do so. Uh, and so, if you're interested in being a trustee on the PGCEA Foundation uh, as the representative council member, okay, it's former presidents, Current, the current officers, uh, and, and in our bylaws, one of the people come from this room. And so if you're interested in that, we will take nominations at the end. Could I, we have some ballots up at the front. Uh, we'll take nominations for that position. Come on. Don't forget your president. Laura, are you ready to make a nomination? I, I am. Okay. Uh, Laura Janus, Suitland High School. I would like we to need nominate. Them up here, please. I would like to nominate Donna Yearwood Hayes. Donna Yearwood Hayes. Board members need ballots too. Microphone one. Oh. I'm at Jones Perwood Elementary. I would like to nominate Olive Lennox. Olive Lennox. 
every place where there is an FAC, I, I would like to have to do this on the back of the, of the agenda every month and, and have it come halfway down the page. I would like to have most of the buildings in the school system sending me some form of FAC report, even if it's just to say, life is good here, okay? Because it's nice to know that there are buildings out there where life is good. There are a few, okay? Uh, when you write your FAC reports, I, have, I still have members, reps, who have a tendency to describe the problem and not offer solutions, okay? And that's, that's an, another important thing here. Sometimes you won't. I would say at Northwestern, there were occasional items that would come through that we would say, the FAC does not know what to recommend here, but it's a problem. But that was a bit, it was the it was the exception and not the rule. We always put something down to say we think this is what we should be doing, or or this is a possibility of a, a resolution to the problem. Always offer something as a resolution, uh, wherever possible. Offer something as a resolution, and every now and then, when there's one that you throw your hands up and you say, "Can we meet and talk about this one?" And we would we usually do that. Call the principal in and say, "We're going to invite you to the FAC. We have an issue that we do not know what the solution to the problem is, and 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 work in that way." Okay, uh, but I, I still have a lot of laundry list of what the 27 things are wrong in this building, but with no attempt to offer management the insights of the FAC. And you need and you need to be offering those insights. Sometimes they're they're it's a real simple fix and you can offer it up, okay? So that's, a, that's on the FAC reports. The data breach. I've posted, thank you, wow, they were fast. They were fast. Uh, I'm going to announce the winners of the vacancies on the NEC commission. And Lenora Scott, Parkdale High School, you are on NEC Commission. And Sylvia Boswell, you have won. You may. Winning elections is fun. Okay. Uh, where was it? The day punch. Okay. I'm, I, I posted something online. Uh, you have the executive director's report in front of you. Uh, I'm going to tell you that at 4.31 on Friday, when I received that email, paint peeled in my office. Uh, I, th I think it was Whiskey Tango Foxtrot. Uh, so, I, I was less than thrilled, and uh, I think everybody who received it is less than thrilled. Okay, but I'm an old Navy guy. I happened in the Navy to learn about something called Murphy's Law, okay? And, and Murphy's Law is universal. If it can go wrong, it will. If it cannot go wrong, it will, okay? Uh, it's hard to make things foolproof because fools are so ingenious, okay? Things are going to happen in this lifetime. Plane wrecks are terrible things. We have gotten them down to almost zero, but as as try as we hard, as try as hard as we do, accidents still occur. And so we can't cry over this spilled milk too much. Yes, the first natural reaction of a human being to, on something like this, where my life can be affected. I I am a person who has had identity theft. Uh, I had to go passport and and birth certificate in hand to my bank to prove that I was the owner of my credit card and to get $5,000 in charges in Haiti removed from my card, okay? Uh, it took me a while. The, the, whoever got my, my credit card number had everything and had called the credit card company and had usurped my identity, okay? It does happen. My wife is on her third breach. This, this issue won't be going away from our attention anytime soon. Because she got breached at UMCP, she got breached at Target, and now she's been breached possibly at work. 
uh, it's not going to go away. We, can, we can't go back in time and fix this thing. It's all now about what we do going forward, okay? You, the school, uh, the Board of Education is preparing to release something this evening, I believe, uh, with more specifics about what happened. Uh, we've been in dialogue with them since Friday, Saturday morning. Uh, we've been, we've sent a list of probably 15 questions. Uh, and it can't, at this point, be about bashing anyone. Uh, we, put, we put erasers on the end of pencils because people are going to make mistakes. And this was a doozy. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to find the nice words. Fiasco comes to mind. It's, it's, it's a, this, is, this is one of those you go, whoa, this, these are potential, if not career ending, definitely career stalling events for somebody somewhere. Okay, so going forward, I urge all of you, and I urge you to urge your members to go and change your passwords at your banks, uh, at your credit cards. Go, go. That's your first thing, just just in case. On, on the on the minuscule odds, I think that anything's going to come of this. I, from what we're hearing, not to say that it's impossible or totally out of the realm of possibility that this would go any further than it's gone right now. Um, I, I, you cross your fingers and hope on this one, but you go to your credit rating agencies, you, you make sure you get uh, an alert status that your, your information has been compromised, uh, and, and go from there. We have to worry about the aftermath right now. The school, the Board of Education, is conducting an investigation. Uh, they have come far since even Friday. Uh, we sent out 15 questions to which I think we've received at least 12 answers. Uh, and it's, it's not a pretty picture by any means. It, you know, this is one of those, this is, it's hard to forgive this one, uh, but it, it's, we have to move forward from this because there's no way that we can undo this. Uh, but it's, I don't know if the exec would like to add anything, but uh, it's, 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 it's in his written report. Uh, so that's where we are. It's, it is uh, 10,000 members, 9,500 uh, teachers, it sounds like. Uh, uh, the, it sounds like it was 9,500 of the 10,000 were members of Unit 1. Uh, and it went out to approximately 50 principals that we know of. Yes? Uh, that We have 9,700 in the unit. We think 9,500 were affected. <laughs> Uh, 9,500 went out in the email, okay? And so there, there, there has been a breach. It's a question now in the investigation of finding out if, if the breach is totally under control, okay? Uh, I, I'd rather be safe than sorry. Personally, I'm going to be changing all my passwords this week. I'm going to, I'm going to go in and, and, and do my due diligence and make sure that, that anything that's associated with me today is changed by the end of the week next week. Okay, I, I just think it, we're living in this age, folks. Uh, whether you're hacked or whether you do something absolutely silly and send it out, uh, it, we're living in an age where personal information is at risk. Uh, we're, we're, I'm pushing personally pretty hard that they move beyond one year of protection. Uh, I, I, the University of Maryland did five years. Uh, it, it's, I'm, I'm going to, I may have to stamp my feet and hold my breath till I turn blue on that one. But it, I want them to go beyond a year of, of the uh, protections. So it, it's an ugly, Fiasco. It is. It's terrible. 
It's a public relations nightmare. It's not good for the school system. Uh, there, but there is no way to put the genie back in the bottle. And right now, it's it's letting the school system uh, follow Komar. They have they have a series of events that they have to do. Their first one was try to contain the, the breach, then uh, find out what the scope was, then. A, of info, they have to inform the uh, AG before they inform you. The, the Attorney General gets the list of affected employees before the employees get it. Uh, because he wants to put stuff, the Attorney General puts stuff in place to help protect us as soon as the breach occurs. Uh, just in case something happens immediately. And then they informed the membership on Friday and there are still elements of an investigation. We understand that there is, there is someone, we know not who and don't really care, someone's been placed on administrative leave. Uh, so it, there, it, it, will move, it will move forward at its own pace, the investigation will come out, and the Board, board of Education is going to put out something with more specifics tonight, so watch your emails tonight because something else is going to come out giving more specifics from the, from their end of it. Okay? So that's yeah. It's what it's yeah. It's hard to not be oh let's see. Oh, no. oh and your new PGCEA Foundation board member is Dummy Yearwood Hayes. Ken, I guess my question is, and I've sort of been in a coma for the past three days. If I've been sick, if <laughs> if the if the compromise was our personal identification information, our social security numbers, and etc., by changing our passwords, how will that further protect us? Because you're, it seems to me that if they have my social security number and I change, they don't know what my password is unless I've given it to them. So it, it, to me, it, it kind of seemed like it, I don't know, maybe it's just an overkill, but I'm not sure. I just, I don't know. Cause I, the industry standard right now anyway is to change passwords on anything where you have, where you have financial holdings every three to six months anyway. And so it's just a matter now of getting in, in if something happened and it got out and somehow they use your information, go through and change stuff now. And you should be changing it once every three to six months anyway. I change mine, I'm just, I saw well, a lot of faces go whoop when you said that, so I just wanted to make sure. It, it's, right. you, that should become, in this day and age, changing your passwords needs to become standard operating procedure. Get, if you don't have one, get Dashlane, get, get one of the password managers, put everything that you have in your password manager, you can just go through very quickly and change passwords in, in a few minutes uh, for most of your accounts. It's, it's worry about the ones where you have where you have financial holdings and stuff. So we'll know more tomorrow morning than we know right now because the board is going to, is putting out a release to all all affected persons uh, of more details tonight, uh, much at our insistence. Okay, so it's it's yes, it's a mess. And nobody's happy about it. And it's not. It's not something that, that's to be taken lightly in any way whatsoever. But what's important is what we do going forward. Uh, and right now, making sure that the credit companies are aware, your credit companies are aware that you had a data breach, put you on watch, uh, get people to email you if anything suspicious happens. My, uh, after I lost my identity. I, with my credit card company, I have a super secret password that only they and I have. Uh, so that if anything gets charged in my account that I don't know, when I call, they say, what's your super secret password? And I give it to them and they say, okay, we'll take, we'll get rid of that. Uh, so the credit card companies are becoming very aware of the fact that identity theft is real. Uh, and they're putting things in place and you probably want to make sure that you, you're getting that notification out and taking what action you can to protect you and your assets. Okay, and that and that's that's just the starting point. You, you've got the list there in, in the exact report of all the things that 
that we're putting forth for you to, to start thinking about doing going forward. We can't go back and fix this. And get it's, your free credit report. And get your free credit report. Okay. okay. Microphone one. Hi. Um, a question about the breach. So my first thought is, a lot of the confusion is how did it happen. It said that there was a report sent out to select principals. So were our social security numbers in that report? And my, the second part of my thought is how extensive is this breach? Because our spouses, our children, socials are all part of this um, matrix. So giving us access to you know one year of free credit, how do I know that my daughter's social is being used or is it compromised? So to what extent do we really know that this went to. It's just the employees, not the spouse. Okay, and, it, and the data, the data did include social security, and this is according to the memo you got on Friday. Social security number, date of birth, and EIN. Okay, and it went to 50 principals. Okay, um, there, there was a report generated to 50 principals. One principal opened it and said, you've got a problem and they shut down, they sent out an email immediately and said, shut this down, don't open this, and someone somewhere failed to follow those directions. One person. We know not who, um, don't care who. Uh, well, I mean, you can care, but if you were in trouble, you don't want your news broadcast to the world either. Okay, that's not due process. Let, let the person have due process. So, if the devil is a member, the devil gets due process. Okay? Sharon? We were led to believe that uh, hard copy documents of the uh, credit reporting information was to be received snail mail today in a two-person sample of one of my members and myself. That hasn't happened. Was that just too soon? Um, I, I saw the same thing Friday and said you snail mail would follow. I haven't gotten it. I haven't been home today. Uh, but the, it did say tomorrow, and I didn't get it on Saturday, so I was a little annoyed. But there, but there, it's 10,400 people that they're sending snail mail to, so I'm going to give them a couple more days. US, USPS is another issue entirely. Okay. Uh, peer assistance and review. We have hit 100 client teachers. Yay! Uh, we have peer reviewers uh, in classrooms, consulting teachers in classrooms since November 12th. Uh, the president has received thank you letters from several client teachers who have said thank you for getting me the assistance I need. Uh, I like my I like my cooperating consult. I gotta say consulting. The Montgomery calls them cooperating. We call them consulting. And I wrote the book, so it's really funny. Uh, but they, they like our consultant. We like our consulting teacher, and she's already been a help. And so I'm getting thank you notes and things moving forward. Uh, it's a uh, it's going to be a tight year on funding. So we I may be having to set myself on fire somewhere to get enough funding for next year to increase it to to another round, another cohort of cooperating to consulting teachers. I will do this eventually. Uh, so the PAR program continues, it's here, it's real, uh, and for the most part, the reaction has been uh, great from both members and from the administration. So, crossing our little fingers going forward. Uh, exec you have the executive director's report. If there are no questions, we'll move on to a membership petition and comment.